Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Come on in and have a seat. I am here to make a couple announcements, but most importantly, I'm here to um, welcome our new pastor to Miami Whitewater United Methodist Church. <laughs> pastor Jesse Blevins. You can stand up. <laughs> His wife, Kim. Daughter, Chrysalyn and Caden. <laughs> Son, Caden. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. So, and I also have um, a few announcements. Could, could I uh, sure. do that now? I, we just want to say thank you for all of the gift cards, the baskets, um, the donuts, <laughs> um, uh, all the fruit and, and the food, and um, also taking the shower. I'm very thankful whoever repaired the shower for me. I um, want to say thank you for that. And I, I know a lot of work was done at the Parsonage, and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, we're the kind of folks who... Uh, we'll do our best to try to keep the parsonage up in good shape. And it's always our goal to leave a parsonage in as good or better shape than it was when we arrived. So we just want to thank all of you for your work and let you know we appreciate it. And uh, we'll be taking care of the home you provided for us. Thank you again. Just two announcements, Grow to Know, uh, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. to 12 at Legacy Church, uh, and I guess we're starting into July. So I understand they're uh, kind of short on volunteers in July, so if you're interested, you can see me after church. You can ask Sue or Rita, Robin, I think they have done it. Um, I have not yet. So. Um, I will be volunteering in July um, and announcing a Bible study uh, led by Pastor Jesse. When's Dave Collada? I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, looks like Tuesday nights, uh, 6.30 to 8. And no cost, uh, beginning July 13th. And that's all I have. Will you all stand for the call to worship, please? To those who creep towards the kingdom, to those who rush toward the kingdom, to all of you, however you come, in speed and sloth, to the door and to the arms that are always open wide. Well, we all can sit. We're going to have a nice video now. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together love. Together, worthy, all together, wonderful to me. King of all days, also oh high.
We would like to invite the kids to come down forward here. Uh, how about if the kids would come down and sit on uh, these stairs for us? Could you do that? Will you let me come back down, son? All right. Today, our Bible story is about a woman who was very sick. And she was sick for a long time. Maybe one or more of you have been sick, or, or you have someone in your family or someone you know that's been sick for a long time. This woman had been sick for a long time, and some, somehow she had heard about Jesus, heard about the miracles Jesus had been doing, and she wanted Jesus to heal her. Jesus, when he walked this earth, healed a lot of people. And she believed that Jesus could heal her too. But there was a problem. One day Jesus was walking through this woman's town and there were so many other people around trying to get Jesus' attention that she could not get close enough to Jesus to even touch him. And she was afraid. Um, this sick woman was so afraid that she didn't even try to talk to Jesus. Because of her illness, it made other people not want her to be around them. So she was kind of excluded over being a sick person. So instead of going up to talk to Jesus, because he thought, she thought Jesus was like everyone else, didn't want her around, she just said, I'll just go up and try to touch the hem of his prayer garment. Uh, Jesus wore a prayer garment, and on the bottom of the prayer garment, they had knots tied with strings on them and the prayer, the prayer garment was something that um, Jewish people would use when they would go in their time of prayer so this woman reached out and she grabbed this tassel that was on the prayer garment of Jesus and when she did that in faith power came from Jesus body and went into her and it was so much so that Jesus knew it. He instantly knew it, and he said, Who touched me? Because he felt power of God come from him. And she was afraid. 
The woman was afraid, but she still reached out. And you know, when Jesus turned and looked at her, he didn't say, oh, you've done something bad or you shouldn't be here. Uh, go away. No, he welcomed that woman and he said, great is your faith. He said, you have great faith. And that's what he did. He welcomed her. He never excluded anyone for any reason. So Jesus healed this woman of an awful sickness because she trusted in him. And the worst sickness that we have as human beings is not necessarily sickness of our body, which we all go through times, but we have a sickness of the soul called sin. That's our worst sickness as human beings. And Jesus heals that today for any, anyone who will come to him. And of course, he does that through the cross of which we just sing about. We come to him through the cross and we know that he died for our sin. He paid for them all. Therefore, we're, we're forgiven. And I just want to say, don't ever be afraid to come, to come to Jesus. Don't ever let something that you've done make you ashamed to come to church or, or to go to God in prayer. No matter what you've done, uh, no matter um, how ashamed you are or how bad you feel about something, Jesus always says, come. He never turns us away. He always wants to love us, always wants to help us, he always is willing to help us feel better. And all we have to do is reach out. And we can't reach out and grab his robe like the woman did that day physically. But we reach up to heaven and we grab him by faith in heaven uh, as we look to him in prayer and as we worship him. Uh, we, and, and I just want to say, as you go through this upcoming week, when you go through a hard day, you're, you're having a trouble with something just remember reach out to Jesus because he's he's there for you and he wants to be there for you uh, can I say a prayer for us God we thank you for your love and acceptance we thank you that you love us as we are and that you work in our lives continually to help us to become who you would have us to be. We lift up these young people here this morning. We pray may your spirit rest upon their hearts and their lives. We pray may your word be made real to them. And we just ask God, may you this week draw them closer to you and help them to know your love for them in their own hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen want to thank you guys for coming down. I think you've got some stuff to do um, junior church this morning. You guys can go to junior church if you want. Say, that's the way to do it. Put us on the spot, Dad. They may have cookies and donuts in there or something. I'm getting in that line and going too. But the, our Lord says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, who are tired and weary, and I will give you strength, and I will give you comfort. So let's go to him now in assurance of his love and care for us. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning by faith. We ask that you will immerse each one of our hearts into your love. And it's in the presence of your love that we find wholeness and healing. And it's in the presence of your love that we are washed from our sins and set free from the chains of yesterday's sins. It's in the presence of your love that we are able to live for you courageously without fear. 
Lord Jesus, through the person of your spirit, we trust that you are here and you are walking among us today. And even though we can't see you with our eyes of our flesh, we look to you with the eyes of our hearts. And we reach out to you by our faith this morning. And we know, Lord, that even as much as we would like to touch you, that you desire even more to reach out and to touch us as your people. Minister to every one of us today. Take away our fears. Grant us encouragement as we struggle with our doubts. Lead us into the place of healing beside the still water, to the place of green meadow, to the place of rest and wholeness that you have for each one of us. And Lord, we ask this morning that you would remove anything from our hearts that would keep us from being able to live our lives day by day in fellowship with you, walking with you, giving praise to you. We thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you will uphold us in the days of this week that is yet to come. Uphold us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we continue to pray for our nation, for its leaders, for our senators, for our Congress, for our Supreme Court. We pray, God, that you, where they have gone astray, that you would lead them by your spirit back into your truth. We pray for our children that you would keep them safe over their summer vacations and their summer breaks. Keep them safe as they ride their bicycles, play with their friends, or even as some of them take their first job. Keep them safe as they get their driver's license and possibly head to the road for the first time. And we pray, Lord, for our church. We pray, Lord, that we might be a hospital, a place of wholeness and healing for the community, a place where people will know that they can come and be welcomed and be touched by your presence as we gather in this place. We give you all the thanks and the glory, even as we pray to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even praying together these words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
prayer after the offering, but let us pray. Generous and giving God, we thank you for your great faithfulness to us. We present these tithes and offerings to you, even as we remember that you not only see what we give, but you also see the hearts from which the gifts come. We pray, God, may you bless these gifts. Use them to bring your joy, your love, and your peace to us and to others through the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're, we're ready to hymn. Uh, let's stand and join together, if you would, uh, in hymn number 382. No, Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown said she was going to do our scripture. <laughs> Mrs. Brown has backed out of reading the scripture. <laughs> oh, she had a talk with me this morning about her personal reading of the scripture. And uh, I thought that she was saying she was gonna read scripture for the church. <laughs> also, Usher Tom talked with me about flowers and plants and about um, rotating plants. And I told him he'd have to talk to my wife about that because I don't do the gardening. And he said, no, I was talking about you being rotated from where you were coming here and planting and growing where you are. So maybe Sunday morning, I'm not the person to talk to.
Well, the title of my message this morning, okay, I not, no, no, I, ha I haven't forgot. Uh, title of my message this morning, Is the Doctor In? Is the Doctor In? And um, as we come to this passage of scripture, we see Jesus coming back from a tour in which he had crossed the Sea of Galilee. And when he had crossed the Sea of Galilee, he stilled a storm that rose up and caused his disciples uh, to say, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? And then when he gets on the other side, which we normally think the grass is greener on the other side, he gets on the other side and he meets a demon-possessed man. And this is Jesus trying to get away for a break, so I'm sure he knows how I feel now. But um, he goes over there, he meets a demon-possessed man. Uh, people have a, get very angry because Jesus messes with their pork production uh, while he's there. Then he leaves that area because they literally asked Jesus to leave when he messed with their pork. And then he comes back to, gets back in the boat, comes back to uh, Capernaum. And when he gets there, all the same people that he had been teaching before were still waiting on him to come back. And they were wanting his help with various uh, issues. And we're going to look at uh, two people, particularly in our text today, that did receive help from Jesus. One was Jairus. He had a um, ill daughter. And the second one was a woman with an issue of blood. And that's pretty much all we're told uh, about the woman in our text. But I'm going to read for us now from uh, Mark chapter 5, uh, verses 21 through 43. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him. And Jesus was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged Jesus earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with her and a great multitude. Jesus went with him. Jesus went with Jairus and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. The way it phrases that makes me, I'm nervous about doctors, suffered many things from many physicians. Well, she spent all that she had and she was no better, but she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came behind Jesus in the crowd and touched his garment. Immediately, uh, the blood flow was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately felt in himself, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, look at the multitudes thronging you and you're asking who touched me? And Jesus looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. Sounds like a good place for prayer, fell down, tell him the truth. And uh, he said to the woman, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While Jesus was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. And Jesus permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then Jesus came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a commotion. And those were there weeping and wailing loudly. And when Jesus came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and this weeping? The child isn't dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed Jesus. 
But when Jesus had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entered in where the child was lying. Then Jesus took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, Kumai, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But Jesus commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given her to eat. Typical teenager. She must have been hungry when she woke up. Let's, let's uh, say a prayer. Father, as we seek to understand your word today, we pray that you would give to us truth, your spirit of truth, and give to us, God, hearts that are open and receptive to be transformed and changed through your word and your spirit. Speak to us today. Comfort us. Encourage us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we come to our text today, we see that there were two people who needed the help of Jesus. Uh, and there's nothing surprising about that. They came to Jesus with medical problems. Medical problems were common in Jesus' day, and of course, medical problems are still common uh, today. And uh, today, we're probably more dependent on medicine and uh, the medical field than we've ever been. Maybe that's why it's so much fun to tell a few jokes about the medical profession. And I have family that work in the medical profession. Don't take anything from these jokes. Get a laugh if you can. Says one comedian, my doctor told me he'd have me on my feet within two weeks. He was right. I had to sell my car to pay the bill. <laughs> Another gentleman went in to see the doctor, senior citizen. He said, my left arm hurt me and so did my right foot, my neck and my back. I went in to see the doctor. He tapped on my knee with a little hammer, and he said, how are you now? And uh, he said, now my knee hurts too. Anyway, one doctor noticed his patient was quite concerned about the impending surgery. And in an attempt to calm his patient about the upcoming surgery, the doctor began to share his own problems with the patient. He said, you know, as a doctor, I have a lot of stress. I live in a lot of stress, and I'm trying to figure out right now how I'm going to pay for my daughter's wedding and my son's college at the same time. The patient was still and quiet and th thought about that for a little bit, and then he broke the silence and said to the doctor, am I paying for the wedding or for the college? <laughs> well, maybe these, fall, these, these jokes kind of fall under the category that we laugh to keep from crying. One statistic that surely uh, makes us cry is this one. The average American spends 49 hours in their lifetime seeing doctors, but even worse, they spend 64 hours waiting to see doctors. So here we come to our text today. Jairus comes to Jesus for medical help. Of course, he's a leader in that in, in the synagogue there, and he was taking a great leap of faith to come uh, to Jesus. He comes to Jesus because he has a daughter, 12 years old, and as far as we know, Luke says it was his only daughter. So he has this sick child, and he becomes desperate. He becomes desperate. He becomes desperate um, for his daughter to be healed. And we're told in the text, he comes, he bows down, and he, and he worships Jesus, falls at his feet and pleads with him. And uh, notice the faith that he has. He says to Jesus, come lay your hands on my daughter, and I know that she'll be healed. And uh, this was a great uh, statement of faith from this man. And uh, anybody who's ever had a um, sick child knows that you do anything, spend any amount of money, use any amount of energy, do anything that you could to help that sick child. Well, Jairus had confidence in Jesus. He, 
He knew Jesus was like his only chance for his sick child to be uh, made well. And how often do we lose our confidence in Jesus when the problem comes? We forget our, it seems like we forget all of our past experiences with him, all the past prayers that he's heard and all the things that he's done for us. But scripture reminds us, even when we do forget the goodness of our Lord and the things he does for us, scripture says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, think, or even imagine. And we see from our stories in the scripture today, pretty much all we have to do is come with humility. Both the people, both people in this story, Jairus came with humility. Also, this, this woman with the issue of blood, she came in humility. And the Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So this bleeding, this, this bleeding woman interrupts Jairus. Here, you know, Jairus comes, he's worshiped Jesus. He's trying to get Jesus, come and heal my daughter. She's at the very verge of death. And he's trying to get Jesus. And of course, he's surrounded by crowds of people. And then this poor woman comes, comes crawling through the crowd. She's uh, had some type of chronic hemorrhage, been bleeding. And she's been suffering very badly. I mean, when you've suffered for something for 12 years, you've, you've suffered pretty greatly. And this woman had spent everything that she had. At that time, medical help must have been pretty expensive too. She spent everything that she had for help. And what's so sad is instead of getting better, she got worse. And that happens today. Uh, modern medicine is a great invention today. I love the discoveries that they make. I pray for healing, for cures to come. Uh, for cancer and, and heart disease and all the things that tend to kill us as human beings. But we know not every disease can be healed yet by modern medicine. This woman's condition uh, was one such condition at that time. And she had been ostracized because in their religion, in Jewish religion, to touch something uh, that's bleeding made them unclean. So this woman had not only she not only had to go through the pain and suffering of being sick, she also had to be isolated and lonely. And she had to go through this, far as we know, all by herself. I tell you, there's nothing harder in life than going through some suffering all by yourself and feel like you don't have anyone to turn to. But one thing we see, even though the community rejected this woman, Jesus didn't. Jesus never rejected her, and I think that's encouraging for all of us, that even when everyone else rejected this woman and said she's unclean, she's not worthy to be around us, Jesus still let her come. You might consider yourself unclean for some of the things you've done in your life or uh, some of the sins you've committed, but by grace, God sees us not as we are, but as who we are can be. The woman said within herself, and this is faith, this is faith to meditate on scripture in your mind, to get a scripture and think about it all day, think about it all week. She says, if I could just touch, that's faith, if I could just touch. She's saying this in her mind. She's believing it. If I could just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. That's faith immediately. It says, after she touched his cloak, her prayers granted, her bleeding stops. And at that point, Mark says, not only did the woman feel that she was healed instantly, but Jesus also felt at that moment that something had come forth from him, from his divine being, and brought healing uh, to this woman. The society calls this woman unworthy, but notice Jesus called her daughter. Society said she's unworthy. We don't want you around. Jesus said, great is your faith, my daughter. Immediately he adopts her as, as his own. Daughter, your faith has healed you. And then he says to her, 
Go in peace. Imagine how Jairus feels, though. This woman gets her miracle, yet he knows his daughter's at home dying. They don't really have a, a minute to spare. You know, Jesus is the 911 call for Jairus that day. We're trying to get him over there. And uh, he's sympathetic, but could you imagine that how fearful he was? My daughter's going to die, and I've got the person that can keep her alive right here, and I just can't get him. I just can't get him there quick enough. And sure enough, some people come from Jerry's house and uh, says, "Don't bother with him anymore. Don't bother with Jesus. She's dead now. Wasting your time. Wasting your time." You ever been told that the situation's futile? Don't bother anymore. Just give up and accept it. That's the way it is. But let me say this. It ain't over until it's over. And it ain't over until God says it's over. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, reminds us that we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned by God. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed because when we're struck down, God lifts us back up. Oh, I like for every, every phrase, we are this, we are, we are, but, but, but you got the word, but not in there but not in despair, but you're not abandoned. You're not destroyed. And let me just say, faith says, but God, but God. No matter what the doctors say, no matter what the situation says, no matter what people around you say, but God has the final say. And it's never too late to give. It's never too late for God. Don't give up on God. And, and let me just say this, delay is not denial. Once his daughter died, I'm sure he felt like there's no way I'm going to get my prayer answered now. Jesus can't do anything about it anymore. Let me just stop praying about it. Let me just leave him alone. But notice delay wasn't denial because Jesus simply said to him, she's asleep. I can still take care of it. I can still take care of it. And he goes to Jairus' house. And when he gets there, all these people are welling and crying and uh, making a big commotion. Uh, about her death and notice uh, Jesus puts them all out and he speaks in Aramaic and he says to leave the coon which means little girl get up I believe had Jesus not said little girl there and if he just said get up at that moment they would have had the resurrection from the dead right there everybody would have got up from their graveyards here we're given a little bit of picture of the resurrection but th Jesus said Little girl, get up. Just like when he raised Lazarus from the dead, if he, if he had not said the name Lazarus, but if he simply said, come forth, there would have been all these people coming out. Resurrection. And notice the text tells us when these people saw it, they were out of their mind with amazement. They didn't know what to think about it. Has God ever done something in your life that just is out of your mind? You can't explain it? just blows you away, somebody get healed, somebody, life get turned around such dramatic way, there's, you know there's no explanation but God. So these two stories are different, but, and they have two different kinds of people. Jarius, he's a man on the upper crust of society. This woman, she's in the lower crust of society. She's been out of work. She's been sick for 12 years. She doesn't have family. She's all alone. Jarius, he's wealthy. He has servants at his house. He's, a, he's, a, he's on the very top of the pile, so to speak. And this woman is on the very bottom. But notice, Jesus is for you no matter where you are. Well-educated or not well-educated. But there are two things, despite how different these two people were, that unite them. One is they were united by their need. They both had a need for Jesus. And second, they were united in their faith 
They both had faith in Jesus. So what can we take away? What can we take away from from our text? First of all, we see God is no respecter of persons. Does it make a difference if you're a top dog or underdog? You're important to the Lord. He cares about all. And any who come to him in humility and faith, he will minister to. Sometimes your faith is going to be tested. Maybe you've been praying about something and the answer hasn't come. Expect delays. Remember, delay is not denial. It's not rejection. God is no respecter of persons. All are important to him. Expect for the delays, but don't give up. I like what Max Lucado writes in reference to this story. Everyone came to Jesus. No one was afraid to come to him. He welcomed everyone. Second thing we take away from us with this story. In every challenge in life, faith makes a difference. Faith makes the difference. Whether you're praying beside the bedside of a sick child or you're facing a serious illness of your own, whether you're going through problems in the workplace, maybe you're going through rejection or divorce, whatever you're going through, remember this. Faith makes the difference because if you got faith in God Almighty, he says, even the faith of a size of a mustard seed is enough for him to work in a person's life and and be seen working. You know, physical healing, it might come and it might not. It might not. But faith will make the difference in how you handle it. As long as there is God on the throne, there's hope. Never give up. Remember that above the sun, the sun is shining our Lord and Savior at the right hand of God. There's a devotional book called God's Little Devotional Book, a story that's inspiring about a woman named Mary Manichi. She gave birth to her second child, Mary Lou, and she was diagnosed with a rare disease called Cooley's anemia. And it was a terrible disease that requires the person to get a blood transfusion every two weeks And people with this disease normally die before they're age 20. Well, she wanted to make sure, her and her husband, that they had other children, that they wouldn't be born with this illness. And the doctor uh, assured her that this was such a a rare genetic disorder that the other children wouldn't be born with this illness. So she gave birth to a son. And despite what the doctor said, Her son was born with the same disease, Cooley's anemia. One day, she walked into her child's room, and she found her child, who's supposed to be dead by the age of 20, making a a pen to sell at a craft show. And she told her mother, I'm going to make and sell these so I can earn money to go to college. Didn't didn't she know she'd probably not live long enough to go to college? Then a teacher called her mother and spoke about what Rose Marie had written in school as the one thing she was most thankful for in her life. She had written she was thankful for good health. Can you imagine that? She's living with a fatal disease. And she said she was thankful to God for giving her good health. Well, Mary Menichi ended up having three children. They were all born with this rare disease. George grew up to become a geologist. Mary Lou went on to earn a place on the honor roll and play the piano. Her children went on despite the odds, and lived their lives. Manichi finally concluded, if they love life so much, am I to love life 
less. Let me say it again. Don't give up. Your life might be hard, but you're not defeated as long as you don't give up. God's no respecter of persons, and God cares for our every need. And remember, in every endeavor in your life, faith will and does make a difference. As long as there is God, there is hope. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Let us pray. Father, we need your presence in our lives. We need your ministering love to be granted to each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for your promises that assure us that when we come to you with humility, that you hear our prayers and you look upon us and notice our needs. And I just pray, Lord, today that you'll minister to us, reach out to us with your healing presence, minister to those who are struggling with illness and live in pain every day, minister to those who may be having problems in their workplace, Minister to those who may be going through relational problems with their spouse or their children or family. And Lord, we pray that you'll minister to every need that is present here today. And by faith, we cast our cares upon you because you have told us you care about our every need. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. If you would, let's stand and uh, join together in our closing hymn. It is well with my soul.
Let us go under the peace of God, ruling in our hearts and in our lives. Now may the love of God our Father, the peace of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and the fellowship and presence of God's Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.